If you want to start a fitness blog completely from scratch, you came to the right place. By the end of this video, you are going to know how to build a fully functional, professional WordPress blog for free that looks just like this and contains customized logo, moving background, buttons, automatically updated blog posts, your sidebar profile, custom navigation, works on mobile as well as computer and much much more. This video is designed to be a complete A to Z, 0 to 100 step by step tutorial for people without any prior blog building experience. There's never been a better or easier time to start your own fitness blog, to share your journey, ideas, workouts and even earn money by writing. So let's get started. Today building website isn't that hard, you can actually do it in 5 simple steps. Firstly I need to show you what is web hosting and if you need one. Then I'm gonna show you how you can go and connect it to your specific domain, which is the name of your site. After that I'm gonna teach you how you can go and set up everything in WordPress so it works fine and you have no trouble doing it. Then we're gonna go and customize it so it looks beautiful. And last but not least, we are actually gonna go and post some blog posts. Now what is web hosting? Every single website consists of many stuff such as text, buttons, images, videos, links and much much more. All of those elements must be stored on one location, you can think about it like a file. Now every website has different size, for example my website is kind of small, it can be under 1 gigabyte. But there are also huge websites like Amazon.com or YouTube.com that have hundreds and hundreds of terabytes of data and your personal computer simply cannot store everything inside there. So there has to be some middleman. And that is exactly what web hosting is. Let's look at this example. Let's say you want to go to fitnessblog.com. When you click on it on your computer, what is actually happening is that your computer is sending a request via the internet to web server, basically saying, hey, we want to go to this website. Give us all the correct videos, text, images and all of stuff we need to access it. And web server processes this request and is like, yeah, I'm on it and starts searching throughout its database of files until it finds the correct one. And if they find it, they will send it to you in response containing all of those correct elements to load this website. Now this is the response and this process can take less than one second and it's done via the internet. So you are basically renting space on this very specific computer that allows your website to be live 24-7 accessible to everyone on the internet. Now this is the web hosting part. You will also need to get domain, which is basically the name of your site. You can see it here in blue. And you will also have to choose top level domain. Those can be your .com, .net, .org and many many others. In this example I'm gonna go and show you how you can go and build site with SiteGround, which is one of the if not the best shared web hosting provider on the internet. Now if you want to save 73%, you can go and click my link in the description because I am affiliated with them. Or you can simply go and type lookanos.com forward slash SiteGround and it will automatically take you to this website. Now if you type that, you should see something like this. And we can see that this is our shared hosting plans. with our savings applied. Now we have three main options, but if you are a beginner I would highly suggest you to start with startup, it's the cheapest and you only need one website. The amount of space is really good and the chances are the first month you will not be able to get 10,000 visitors per month, you will have to grow to that. And when your blog starts growing, you can always upgrade to a better plan. So you don't need to waste money from the get go. So when you want to go is go and hit get plan. Here you have two options. If you already own some domain, you can go and simply put it in here. But when you don't own any domain, you want to go and put it inside here. So I'm going to go and write Luca. And now what happens is that this domain is already taken because somebody else is already using it. So you have to come up with something different. Just be creative. So I'm going to go for Luca. Luca knows web and I'm gonna hit proceed. 
And here you have a third step when you're gonna go and put up all of your information. So for example, your account information and your personal information. Now don't forget, you wanna go and put your real information inside here because you are gonna be registered as an official owner. And I had some people that wrote fake names, which is really bad because you wanna be official owner of this website and web domain with your real name. So be careful about it. Also your permanent information and here you can set up your data center location. So currently, even though I'm in Europe, I will have most of my traffic coming from the USA. So I can go and put it inside USA. If you don't see it in here, you can go and simply play around. You can go to Australia, Asia, and even Europe. But for this example, we're gonna go and focus on the USA market. Here you can change the billing period. You can see 12 months is the best deal, so I'm gonna go with that. Here we have our price for domain and we have some upsells. Now you don't actually need site down site scanner, it's not necessary. But I would highly suggest you to go with the domain privacy. What it is actually doing is this. Whenever you are registering your domain, your personal information has to be shared on a public place because it has to be public knowledge. But when you buy domain privacy, those companies registering your domain will hide your information under their own name. So you will not get any spam call or some weird emails. So I personally always go for it, but you don't need to go for it. Now here you can go and hit confirm and you probably won't see this value added text in here. So your subtotal should be around $77. So now you wanna go and hit pay now and it will automatically go and it will take you in here. So now you can log in into your SiteGround account and this is what you will see. Well, when you wanna go and access your website, you wanna go and simply click on website and it will show you your new website. Now, just before that, make sure you take advantage of those special offers. You want to go and get SSL certificate. You can see it's a free option available. So you're going to go click on add and here you can choose between those two options. If you are not using subdomains, you don't need to worry about it just now and you can go for this, but also you can go for this. I personally will go for this one. So I'm going to go select and hit activate. And now your website is going to be secured. Now, whenever you want to go login, go to website and simply click on WordPress admin and it will automatically take you to your WordPress account, which looks like this. Now from here, you can go and manage your website and you can even visit it. So I'm gonna go hover over this house icon and click on visit site and it will take you to your new website. And as you can see, if I'm gonna go to incognito mode, people can actually go and access this website, which is really, really cool. Now, let me make a few changes inside here. Firstly, let's make sure that when you go to settings and permalinks, you have this set on post name. If you see something different, go and click post name and hit save changes. Now we want to go to general settings and make sure that we are going to go and add letter H inside here and hit save changes. They will ask us to log in. So you want to go put up your password and hit log in. After that, we can go and create our website because currently it looks weird. So let's change that. Firstly, let's get rid of some pre-written stuff. So I'm going to go on pages and move all of them into trash. I'm going to go and hit apply. Now you can see this new icon trash just appeared. You can go and select it one by one, or you can simply go and select everything with this top rectangle and hit delete permanently and apply. Now let's change the appearance of our blog. You can see that currently we are using this 2022, but let's change it. We're gonna go click on add new and let's look for something called Astra. I'm gonna go and hit search and you can see it inside here that it's even for free. I'm gonna click install and activate. Now, when I'm gonna go hover over website and visit it, you can see that the difference in layout, it's completely different side, but let's add some few more stuff. First thing we need to go to plugins. You can see that SiteGround websites come with free pre-installed plugins. Those are really good because they will optimize your website to work in a better way. And I generally like to keep them as they come. So I don't delete them, but we are gonna go and add new plugins. And in here, we're gonna go and search for 
Kickstarter templates. And you can see it in here and hit install and activate. And now we can go and under appearances, we can see our starter template we have just installed. So I'm gonna go and click on it and it will take us to a new site. We're gonna go click build your website now and here we can select our page builder. We definitely wanna go with Elementor because it's by far the best out of those options. So I'm gonna click on Elementor and here you can see some pre-made website for our needs. But keep in mind, those that have premium, you have to pay more for them. So if you like some website, you can simply click on it and you can even navigate around so you can see your homepage. You can go look about us page. If you like the layout, you can see some services, contact page and many more things. So let's say we like this. We're gonna go hit skip continue. Now we can leave this blank, but I like to uncheck share non-sensitive data. So I'm gonna go and hit submit and build my website. This usually takes somewhere around 10 to 30 seconds, so just wait, because they need to download some stuff for our website. And as you can see, it took us only 13 seconds to download it, so when I'm gonna go visit site, you can see that this is our new website. So whenever you're gonna go, take this and log in as a new visitor, you can see that our site changed dramatically, which is really good. And we can go and re-edit all of this. So when I want to go back, I'm going to go and simply hit dashboard. And you can see that the starter templates also downloaded Elementor and WP Forms Lite, which is basically contact us form and the drag and drop editor, which we can edit our website with. So let's say we want to go and edit it finally. So you want to go hover over this administration bar and click on edit with Elementor. And you can see that we are in an Elementor. So I'm going to go click this navigation off and we can start changing some stuff. You can see that everything I hover over, you can actually redesign. So let's start doing something. Let's say we, we like this, we all love, but not nature, but in this case, I'm gonna go and put fitness. So you can see when I wanna change some text, I can simply click on it and start typing inside title, or I can go hover over it and click on this edit heading on this pencil side and start editing it in here. But let's say we don't like this small text, so let's get rid of it. You can do it by deleting it, but the better way is select this, right click and simply hit delete or hit delete on your keyboard. Now let's change also some different stuff. Let's change this button. Okay, I'm gonna go, click on button and let's change, I wanna go and get different text from get started to my fitness plan. So I've just changed the text. And if you wanna go and link this button to something, you can simply go and for example, put it into about me page. So all of the pages you have written are gonna be put inside here. So I'm gonna click on it and it will insert a link automatically. But you can also put link on any other side of your website or even the website of other people. So now let's change the style. This is where you're gonna go and change the font, the size, the colors, and many, many more things. So let's say we wanna go and put it white text and also the background color we wanna change, but this is white on white, so we cannot see anything. But what I like to do is go and hover this lower bar and it's actually opacity. So you can see that I can make it fully transparent, which doesn't look good now, but we can go and create a border type. You can see currently instead of none, so we cannot see it, but we're gonna go set it on solid and here you can see that it's creating our border type width and here I'm gonna go change color to white and I don't like that it's square so I'm gonna go and change border radius so it's circle now this starts to look really good but what I also like to do is add something called responsivity what does that mean whenever I hover over it it will actually change background color slightly so that it will get a correct response to a visitor. Let me show it to you. So I'm gonna go under color, hover, and make it not fully transparent, but a little bit gray. So when I hover over it, you can see this is not enough. So I'm gonna go edit inside. And you can see when I hover over it, it actually changes slightly color, which basically shows to visitor that this button works. And I really like to edit it because it adds a lot of professionality and I think it looks really good. 
So I'm gonna go and hit update changes so we don't lose them. And now let's change this background because this, we don't need those mountains in here. Well, we can do it easily. We're gonna go and hit edit section. It will edit everything inside this blue rectangle. So we wanna go to styles and you can see this is our current background image. I'm gonna go and hit remove and we can see we are without image. But we don't need to go and be limited only to images. We can actually go and create, for example, video. So I'm gonna go, click on video, and here in background fallback, I'm gonna add my video. So it will open this side, and we can go and select specific file. In this example, I've already found video I like to use. I'm gonna go and upload it. And you can see our video is successfully uploaded. Now we need to go and select this URL file, copy it or simply go inside here and copy URL to clipboard and hit insert media. Now don't worry, this doesn't show us yet the video, but when we're gonna go inside here video link, we can simply insert the video in here and you can see that it's all working and it looks really good. So when I'm gonna go, click this off, you can see that our video is working just fine. But let's say we wanna make it bigger. Well, I'm gonna bring it back. And once again, I wanna make this bigger. So I wanna go and affect everything inside here. What I need to do? Well, exactly. I need to go and edit section. And here in layout, you can see the minimum height. So I can go and make it full side, or I can simply adjust it slightly like this. So let's put it on 650 and hit update. Now when we want to go and see our website, we can simply go here, hover over this eye and click preview changes. And you can see this is what your website looks like to your visitors, which is really cool. Let's change more stuff. Let's say we don't like this section. Well, we don't need to go and delete it one by one by clicking in and hitting delete. We can actually go and delete also all sections. So I'm gonna go hover over it and click this X side. But we can also add sections. So for example, let's create our own section. I'm gonna go click on this plus sign and once again, and here we can see our structure. So for example, this section is the first one. It's one big place where we can put stuff. But now let's create this double section. So I'm gonna go and click on it. But now we have one problem. Let me show it to you. Let's say I want to go and import image, select some specific image like this. And you can see that this image doesn't fully extend to the right side. Well, let's change that. So once again, we want to go and edit everything inside this blue rectangle. So go click on edit section. And here you can see this content width is currently set on box, but we can go and put it on full width. And you can see that our image extends fully to the right side. But let's say we want to have something in between. Well, it's really easily achievable. I'm going to go and hit box. And here under width, we can actually set up our own width. In this example, I'm going to go for 1300. But here is another problem. I don't like it that it's equal size, the equal size in here and here. I want to make this size bigger and this size a little bit smaller. Well, you can actually go and drag this in between section, but, or if you want to make it more precise, you can go double click on this edit column in top left corner. And here you will select your column width as a percentage. So we are dealing with this one. We want to make it one third. So I'm going to simply go and apply 33.33% and hit update. Now we can go and import our content inside here, but before that, we need to create our content. So let me take you back to WordPress dashboard to show you how you can go and create content. When you want to go and exit Elementor, you can go click on this hamburger icon and hit exit to dashboard. And it will take you to your homepage. You want to go click on WordPress icon and you are in here now. When you want to go and create post, you want to go under post and simply click add new. Now this will bring you to this post editor. We don't want to go and deal with this in Elementor. We want to go and create posts inside this basic WordPress editor. Now I have already created a blog post for you. So for example, this is going to be our title. So I'm going to insert it here. And here we can start typing. 
you have two options. You can do it one by one. So for example, let's say I want to go and add this heading. What are some benefits of exercise? You can go and put it inside here and select heading. Or if you want to go and have more options, you can go in here and find a lot of many options. For example, you can add videos and stuff like that. But in this case, let's say we want to go and add heading. So you want to go and insert your heading. And now we want to go and add this paragraph. So go, add paragraph and insert it and hit enter. Now let's say we want to go and create this list. So we're going to copy this and insert list and insert all of those stuff. Now this is a way to do it. You can simply go here once again, hit image. I already know where that is. I want to go upload this image and do it like here. Let's say we want to go change sides of this image. You can do it by hovering over those bars on sides or simply go inside here, select full size, put it on 100% so of the original size, or you can even go and have the size, so 50%, or put up some of your own values. Now, let's say I want to go and align it to center. You can go and do it easily like this. And you can do this all the time, but when you have long blog posts, it's kind of tedious and not the good way. The good part about WordPress editor is that you can simply go inside here and I can copy all of this in Google Docs, including images, copy it, hit Ctrl C, simply go inside here, click new, whatever you like, for example, paragraph and hit Ctrl V. And you can see that it will automatically insert all of the stuff and you can go and remove specific stuff. And you can see that we have our website in here and you can simply go align few things, make it, let's say a little bit shorter, a little bit bigger. So now we have our WordPress blog and it looks nice. You can see we have also some links whenever you want to go and insert it in here. So for example, let's say you want to go and hit some benefit of body. You can go and hit on this site or hit Ctrl K on your keyboard and paste URL link inside here, which is a really easy way. If you want to go and make something bold, you can do it in here or you can do it italic and you have also more options. So this is how you can go and easily create a blog post, which is a really nice way. In here, there are also many additional stuff. You can create templates for your blog post. You can create some permalinks. So that's what I've shown you basically. And you can go also and create categories. So for example, for this one, we want to go and create a category on. And let's say we want to go and add category. Now I would highly encourage you to go and create categories from beginning as a blogger, because when you want to go and start adding blog posts after blog posts, there will come time that you will have too many blog posts for you to remember everything. And when you have categories, you can simply go and manage all of your content really easily. So I would definitely suggest you to go and create categories. Here you can also go and set a feature image, but whenever you want to go, you can even go and upload image. You don't need to do it one by one. You can actually go select all of these images and simply hit open. It will download all of those images for you. And you can set it up. For example, let's say we want to go set up this as our cover image. Let's make it square because this is not in square dimension. So what you want to go and do is go and hit crop in aspect ratio, put one to one. And whenever you just move it, you can see that it automatically is cropping it to square space. So I'm going to go center it like here, hit crop and hit save. And you can see that this is our new square image. I'm going to go and set it as feature image. As you can see, this looks really good. So I'm going to go and hit preview. You can go and preview your work inside here. Or if you're ready, you can simply go and publish it. And as you can see, this is our blog post. It doesn't look that good, right? So let's change this. We don't want to go and change it with Elementor. What we want to go and do is go to customize and click on it. Here we want to go to block and single post. And here we can play with many things. For example, let's turn off this feature image as the first thing we see. So I'm going to go switch that off. And let's say I also don't like those metadata. So I'm going to go and simply click them off. 
and now this is getting a little bit better but now let's go and achieve something with this blog post because it doesn't look that good what we want to go and do is go to global and hit typography now after it load up we can go and deal with this stuff for example let's say we want to go and make this text bigger well we can go and do it with this size so for example when i move it to 33 you're going to be seeing this is much much bigger i genuinely like to stay somewhere around 19 or 18. i think that looks just fine also here you can go and change for example the, the font you want to use or many different stuff let's say you want to go and make it a little bit closer to itself so you're going to go and adjust line height you want to have bigger line heights so you can go and do it here as well and whenever you want to go back you can simply this on this rotating arrow and it will take you to your basic settings now this is important paragraph margin bottom i like to keep it a little bit bigger i like to keep it like this so that it will create some breathing room inside here but now let's for example change those titles so i want to go and go under h2 because I know it's heading to, because I've set it up like that. And you can go and make it bigger or smaller. Let's put it on 40, this looks nice. But let's say we wanna go and change some colors in here. I don't know why, but you can see that clearly this is some weird green color on background. So we wanna go into colors. And here you're gonna see side background. This is everything you see inside here. And you have content background. So you wanna go and set it on white or even make sure that it's on transparent so that it will only take this part now we have heading color so we can see currently it's set up to be weird green color but let's change it here i have actually created this little guide to this website when i have colors fonts logo and favicon i'm gonna use so i simply can go here copy this color and put it inside here so let's say i want to change headings i'm going to click on this editing part and insert the blue color now the text color we can see that it's also weird greenish color so once again i can go and move it for example to a little bit grayish area which starting to look really good now also those link colors i don't really like that they are yellow i think they blend in, blend in with background too much so Let's put it on this pink or salmon color. So link color, I'm gonna go click on it and change it to our color. And you can see that all of the links on our website will be changed to this color. And now you can see hover color is still set on this. So for example, I wanna go put it the same color but make it more visible. So whenever a visitor goes, hovers over it, it will pop up a little bit more. Ah, this looks really good. So we can go and publish our changes so it will actually save them and this blog post looks much much better than we have started with now you can go back to blog post and start adding your blog post inside here i'm gonna go and do this off camera so now i'm back and you can see i've created a few more blog posts and i also created different categories like workout tips my story weight loss recipes and workout equipment but before we are going to go and implement it to our blog we want to go and download one more plugin we're going to go hit add new and search for something called unlimited elements and hit install and activate now you can go to plugins and when you see unlimited elements click and opt in it will take you to this side you want to go and click skip and in here you can see you have many options what you can download but what you want to go is go under post widgets and download those that they are free you can see it in top right corner so i'm gonna go and install it and i'm gonna only need those four and now we can go to our website and edit our content inside here so i'm gonna go once again click edit with elementor and we can go inside here now when i want to go and implement post in here you can see that elementor in the basic free version doesn't have it included you can see that you have to go and pay for it which can be fit over 50 dollars a year which is a lot of money so that's why we downloaded these unlimited elements so now when i go and search for a post 
we don't only see the elementary one, but also we see unlimited elements one. You can see it by the top right corner. So I'm gonna go and insert post blocks inside here. And you can see this is some of my content I've just created. But this doesn't look that good. So let's quickly change that. Firstly, what I like to do is go into grid gap and lower it so that it doesn't have that much gap inside here. Now you can see number of items in one row. So for example, you can go and put it into five if you like, or if you want, you can go and put it in two only. But I like to go for three inside here and intro number of characters is the amount of characters you're gonna be seeing in here. I like to set it up on 200 or 250. And here layout, you can add some different stuff. So for example, you can add category, but I don't recommend it. You can go, for example, you don't like button, you can take it off. Or you can go and play around in here. But this post query is really important because here you can see that this is all of our content. It doesn't have any separation, any categories, nothing. It's just random blog posts in here. But when we want to go include by, I'm going to go click on it. And you can see those are our categories. So when I want to go and, for example, hit weight loss, it will only take us to the post that I have in category weight loss. Where is it? Here it is. You can see those three blog posts are going to be shown inside here, which is really cool. Now, maximum post, we're going to go and hit free because we want to have only three in a row. And now we can go and edit this section in styles. So I'm going to go inside here and you can see this gray border color. I'm going to go and change it to transparent color or white color. And that's it content you can see that it's kind of offset i don't like it i like to go and bring it back to zero image you can go and play around with it you can go and make it a little bit bigger or a little bit even smaller if you would like but generally you can go for 350 or 300 whatever you like i'm gonna go keep it on 300 category we don't need to deal with it because we have turned it off inside here title it's obviously this one and we can go and edit this. Now here you can see that I'm going to use those two fonts, Laura and Railway. So let me go in here and for titles, I'm going to go and use font Laura. Here you can go and adjust size so you can make it really big or really tiny. I'm going to go for something like, let's say this, this looks good. Line height, you can go and put it. I don't like the more, more space, so I like it to be close to itself, uh, about this, I think looks good. Weight, it's how bold basically it is, I'm gonna go and put it on 700. Okay, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. And I think this looks quite nice, maybe a little bit more space inside here. And now you need to listen because this tip really changed the workflow for me. You don't need to go and edit it all the time. You can actually create something called global font. So I'm gonna go, and paste this as h1 and hit create what does that mean well when it comes with font like this for example you don't need to go and redo everything you can simply go hit on this globe and click on your font you have created before and the same thing you can go and do with color so let's say i want to go and add this blue color for text and i don't need to go and save this color and always put it inside it i can simply go create new global, call it my blue and hit create. And whenever I need blue color, I can simply come inside here and find it in here. The same thing I'm gonna go and do with my pink color. So I'm gonna go insert it in here and call it my pink. And now you can see the hover color is different. Now metadata, we have also put it on hidden so we don't need to worry about it. And text is the text inside here. So let's change it. Typography, we wanna go for font call railway and set it up to be not too big but i like to go and for something like let's say 14 is nice so we want to go and we can see the weight if we like we're going to make it a little bit bolder or a little bit less bold you can go adjust line height however you like i'm going to go and keep it on basic stuff and also i'm going to go and save this to my text as a preset now, I don't like this spacing in here. I think it's too cluttered. So we can go and deal with it easily. You can see inside here, title spacing. When I move this bar, 
it will create a lot of space so I want to go and put it let's say like this and the same thing with text so it's a little bit separated nice this looks really nice and last but not least let's edit our button I want to go and edit color so let's put it on pink and blue as hover color now I like how this looks and we can go and create more stuff so let's also put some heading so people actually know what they are looking at let's also put some divider this is just for aesthetic purposes and let's also put some text editor so once again I want to go and hit edit and here I can go and change the font in here so I'm gonna go and simply insert something in here it's our weight loss tips I'm gonna go and align it in center and here is where I'm gonna go use typography I want to go and make it the same font but I don't need to go and click on everything I simply can go here click on h1 and adjust the side according to my needs so I'm gonna go and put it let's say 60 and here we can go and adjust this line this will just create a separation in here so we can go inside here color let's put it also on blue and weight let's put it on two so that it's a little bit thicker but I would like to go and move it a little bit closer which is really easily achievable once again the same thing we have done with this button I'm gonna go click on this pencil go hit advanced unlink those values because whenever you have them linked you can see that you are moving all of them at the same time and it doesn't do what we want them to do so I'm gonna go put it on zero unlink those values and simply create negative top margin which will mean that it brings it closer and here once again it's only text so I want to go here and insert some of my text go into typography hit my text okay let's make this a little bit bigger and let's also change color to something more blackish like this maybe a little bit more weight on it make it a little bit more bolder okay this looks good I just line high a little bit and now I'm really satisfied with it so I can go and move it a little bit closer and the same thing with this blog post unlink values and move it closer but now here's the problem this when I'm gonna go hit update and preview our block you can see that this is too close to each other and we can go and actually go and move everything inside this section when we go and hit edit section I go unlink values once again and here you can see that I'm creating some space I'm gonna go put 50 or you can simply go and put this on zero and you can also go and adjust this so for example put it into 50 and it will move it slightly let's put it on 775 now this looks good but here is the powerful stuff you don't actually need to go and recreate this one by one this is gonna be amazing look at this the simple thing you can go and do is duplicate everything inside here so go go into navigator it will show up this and you can simply go right click and hit duplicate you're gonna go and duplicate everything and I'm gonna go and move everything slightly lower and here you can see that we have two of the same stuff but because we have created this once we can simply go and change the post query so I'm gonna go and include by terms gonna change from weight loss to let's say my story and you can see that it create it automatically connected the right post changed the text and made everything for us so now I simply need to go in here and change this to for example my weight loss journey I'm gonna go and capitalize L and change this stuff in here and you can go and do this how many times you need so for example you can see how easy it is to duplicate it if you do the job once and it's good you can go and make this really easy process so I'm gonna go put divider heading text editor and post blocks so now I can go and change this from my weight loss journey to let's say healthy recipes and once again I'm gonna go and simply recreate this and insert my stuff and edit post query click of my st story hit recipes now here I have more recipes so I have eight items not only three and if I would leave this on 10 you can see that it will automatically show everything inside here which we don't want to do we want to go and keep it in one row so I'm gonna simply go and hit it on three but I have more recipes 
in here than only three and i would like to show more of them well you can actually go and order them not by the newest to oldest by like random order so whenever visitors gonna come back to your website they will see something different something updated so now i can see healthy mushroom soup pink smoothie ball and lentil soup and when i'm gonna go and review those changes you can see that those are different recipes we have still mushroom soup but we have also pesto eggs and baked banana oatmeal and when i refresh this you can see that it will always change to something random and those will stay the same which is really cool way to do it but now let's also create something on our right bar i'm gonna go delete this image and we want to go and put image of our person then we would go and add heading which is gonna be their name some small text editor I would also like to add social icons, a little bit, little divider. And last but not least, we're gonna go and add post list inside here. Now, this doesn't look really good, but believe me, within a few minutes, it's gonna look awesome. So firstly, let's put up image of our person we are creating this blog for. So I'm gonna go hit upload and select this. Now you can see that this is not square, it's 1920 by 1279 and I want to make this square look because I'm going to go and circle it later on. So firstly, if you want to go and create circle, you want to go and put aspect ratio 1 to 1 and hit crop. Move it slightly and it will automatically create this rectangle. So I'm going to go move and position it the way I like. So let's say like this and I'm going to go and hit crop and you can see that it created square image i'm gonna go and hit insert image and we can see it inside here but i would like to see it circular well it's really easy to achieve you want to go click on advanced and under mask click on and hit circle you can also go and do flower even triangle or many different stuff but i like to put it on circle and leave all of those other things as they come but this is a little too big so you can go and play around in here but I genuinely like to go for my custom. And because this is circle with equal size, you wanna go and make sure that your width and height is also the same size. So I'm gonna go hit apply, and you can see that it's a little bit smaller. I also wanna go and bring it a little bit more down so it's in line with these weight loss tips. So simply, once again, go into advanced, unlink values, and hit, you see, even I make mistakes sometimes. You wanna go and scroll it down however much you need. So let's put it on 50. Now, this looks nice. Now let's add name. This is Nia Williams. So I'm going to go and add her name. And in styles, I'm going to go into typography and once again, use the stuff that I've already created. Adjust the size a little bit and maybe align it to center. Now this looks really nice. Let's also add a little bit of description. So once again, click on it, I'm gonna insert my pre-written stuff. This takes a lot of space, so I wanna go adjust it, go to my text, and you can see I wanna maybe a little bit more line height, so it has some breathing space. But the thing that I don't like that it's kind of wide, I wanna make it more square into middle. Well, you can do it easily. You wanna go, click on this pencil, once again, go to advanced, but we are not going to deal with margin right now because margin is dealing with stuff outside of our section or moving the whole section, but padding is doing something with inside our section. So look what happens when I go and start adding left padding. You can see that it started to move to that side. So I'm going to go and put it, for example, let's say to what's good value, 12. And the same thing from the right side. You can see that it's bringing it a little bit closer, which I like. Now, once again, I can go and move it slightly from the heading and this looks really nice. So now let's go and change this. Let's change this even more a little bit. I'm going to go put it to 20 by 20 and adjust the title to, let's say, let's put it on 15. It looks nice. Now let's add some social icons. So you can go and add them up simply in here. Click add item, click on this icon and it will automatically take you to the selection. And you can go and, for example, insert your Instagram. Additional, it can be Pinterest or even stuff like, let's say, TikTok. But you're gonna see that if I gonna go and hit TikTok, it will not show you anything. 
or just simply need to go is go under all icons and it will show you basically every icon that exists. I'm gonna go hit it on here. And let's say we wanna get rid of Facebook, so simply click it off and you can connect them easily. So simply go inside here and put link on your social media in here and it will automatically take you to that site. The cool part also here is you can go and hover it on places you like. So for example, you wanna have Pinterest as first, you can go and simply hover it inside here and you can go and even recreate colors. So let's say I don't like this black color. I wanna go here and hit custom. Here we have two colors, primary color, which is the background and secondary color. So let's say I wanna go and make this a little orangey like this. And if you want to go, you can go and change the inside also, but I don't like it. So I'm going to go and leave it on white. And also I want to go and change the TikTok color. So I'm going to go to custom. And let's put it on something like darker purple, I would say. Something like this looks nice. So now we have our social icons. You can go and add all of your social media links in here and it will automatically work. You can go once again, move this up and down a little bit. But now let's deal with this section divider. We actually want to go and add some text in here and let's change the design of it. Let's make it a little bit more bolder. So let's go for two. And we want to go and make the sticks inside here to be pink and the color to be blue, which is my blue. And also I'm going to go adjust this heading and make it a little less smaller. This looks just nice. And lastly, we can go and deal with this section because this doesn't really look that good. And we can go in here. And once again, you have the simple stuff. You have post query when you can go and create stuff, but you can also always exclude stuff. So for example, by specific post, let's say I don't like this, my 45 pound weight loss story. So I can simply go inside here and hit my and it will automatically pre-select it for you. You're gonna go click on it and you can take stuff from here one by one. You can even go and select it to be random. So the order is always different and random. And you can go and play around in here. I'm gonna leave it like this and change the design. So I'm gonna go hit styles. Now we don't need to worry about it in here. We wanna go to content and make sure that this is set to zero. And the content background is not gray, but is actually white or even better transparent. Now inside image, we're going to go and change the dimensions. I'm going to go for 150 by 150. And this looks really good. Here category, once again, we don't need to worry about it. We are not using it. Title, we definitely want to go change it. We've already used this one, but let's make it a lot smaller like this. This looks about right. And we can go and change the color to blue. And I really like this, but it's kind of cluttered together. So we're going to go and move it a little bit. We're going to go title spacing. So for example, we can move around here. I'm going to leave it to zero. Text, we can go and change the text, which is really nice. I'm going to go for typography, hit our pre-written stuff. And let's say I want to go for, to make it a little bit smaller, but with less spacing or maybe actually leave it as five but you can see that it's all kind of touching but we can go and deal with it really easily we're gonna go to content and once again hit slightly on left padding now make sure those values are unlinked or you can leave them linked if you like this result or you can simply go unlink them and only move the left side and also the right side and you can see that i have some stuff that doesn't show because some of my posts i've purposefully created without image and now we can see that this looks really nice let me also add a little bit more of the space inside here because you can see that there's not a lot of space between the images so i'm gonna go unlink those values and hit a little bit on top value which will create the separation and now this looks really good so i'm gonna go hit update and you can see this is what we have just created our blog now this looks really good but let's do something different let's say we want to go and make this a little bit more squishy because i think this is nearly touching and it doesn't have that much breathing space 
So we can actually go and edit it at once. I'm gonna go, click on this in top left corner called edit column, go to advanced and under padding you can go and simply move everything inside here. 10, 9 by 9. And you can see that it will create some separation. So I'm gonna go hit update and you can always go and preview your changes inside here. Now this looks awesome, as you can see, the links are working just fine. This is gonna take you to my YouTube. And here you have all of your recipes and other stuff, but let's also change this stuff. So for example, we can go edit it with Elementor and you can go and continue adding up a new post inside here, like this. For example, you can go and add section once again, don't forget, if you're gonna go and move this by 33%, it will not match this size because you have to go in here, edit section and under boxed, put your selection in here. And here you can once again go copy it by copying specifically, or you can simply go into navigator and simply duplicate all of those stuff and move it inside here, which is really easy. And you can go and do it with as you can see, we have created one more section. So I'm gonna go hit update. So now we can go in here and change this also inside. So we're gonna go and put from healthy recipes to workup equipment. We're gonna also change some of the description in here. And last but not least, don't forget to change post query from recipes to workup equipment. And you can do and set them, for example, for default. It's gonna be from newest to the oldest and hit update. You can also go and move those stuff in here. So for example, you wanna go move healthy recipes up, you can go and do it easily inside here. I genuinely like to do it more with this navigation bar because I think it's more easily navigatable. You can simply go, click on one thing and it will automatically open it. So for example, let's say we're gonna go and move this my weight loss journey to here and replace it with workout equipment. So simply we need to go and change this, also open this heading and put it in here. So we have workup equipment in here and let's say we're gonna go and move my weight loss journey down in here. You can do it by scrolling down and doing this one by one. And you can see how easily we were able to move it. So now I'm gonna hit update changes once again, preview it and you can see this is what our blog looks like so far. Everything's working whenever we click on it. Everything's going to be automated automatically. So whenever you want to go and add new recipe, you don't need to come here and change it. It will automatically add up with the correct amount of text, with the correct title, with correct font, colors and everything, which is really, really easy. Now let's also go and change this question side in here. So firstly, we need more space. So I'm gonna go and create it by going into margin, bottom margin of this post here and start adding a little bit bottom margin. You can see how it's moving in here. So I'm simply gonna go and add it a little bit in here or you can subsequently go here and add from top. And you can do it both ways, but now let's change the background. So for background, we're gonna go to styles change this image for something different. We're gonna go upload our image in here. It's going to be this one. So I go upload it and hit insert media. You can see that this is a weird angle so we can go and position it. We can go play around for this but I generally like to go for custom. And here on Y position, I'm gonna go and add it up like this. So if you move this back, you can see it in here but we can see that this text is kind of covering it up. So let's fix that. What we want to go and add is something called intersection and simply move it inside here. Now we want to go and make this so that it's full width. So we have more space to play around and also make this box, but a lot bigger box. So we have actually some place where we can put this stuff. So now I can go and move this question inside this bar and also the same thing with this button. I can simply add it here. I want to go and get rid of this text, so I'm going to delete it. Question, I'm going to go under typography, pre-written one, 
make it a little bit bigger, a little bit a lot bigger. You can go check it out if it looks good. Yeah, it does. Uh, put it on color. Now I would like to go in for white. Let's give a little bit separation in here. We can see this is too close together in my opinion. So unlink values. Start adding a little bit more here. For example, 60. You can see when I bring it back, it looks really nice. And now let's talk now. You can go and change it, for example, for high or whatever you like. I would actually go and leave let's talk now. It sounds really good. And once again, let's change our color to transparent, text color to white. You can even go and adjust typography. So for example, if you want to go and make this a little bit more bold. So let's talk now. It will actually pop up a little bit. Put it on 700. Set up border type to solid, move it to let's say free, change the color to white, and if you want to make it circular, you can change border radius. Now this starts to look really good. Once again, I'm gonna go and add hover color so it changes background and only change the background. So we're gonna go move this opacity down, and you can see that it's interacting already here. And I can leave this like this, hit update. And let's direct this button. So I'm gonna go click on this pencil, go to content. And here when you can see link, you can insert any link or you can simply go and put, for example, contact us page, which already came pre-written with this template. So I'm gonna hit contact us page and hit update. So now when I wanna go and preview it, you can see our blocks looks awesome. And when I hit questions, you can see that it's actually interacting and it will take us to contact page. And now we can finally go and change our logo and this heading, but also this footer. It's really easy, but we are not going to do it with Elementor. We want to go and do it with Customize. So click on Customize. And here we have many options. So whenever you go and, for example, click on this button, it will automatically take you to button settings in here and you can change it. But let's say we want to go and get rid of it. The best you can go and do is go to, to Header Builder. And here you can, for example, go and remove this element. And if you want to have it back, you can simply go and put button inside here. It will put it into circle, into middle, and you can move it like this inside here. Put it on right side. You can put it before your menu or after your menu. But in this example, I'm going to go and get rid of it. So I'm going to go and hit remove element. And now this is a little trick because many people make mistakes here. They go to side title and logo and they simply change this logo so i'm gonna go and create our logo and i'm gonna go and put this white logo inside here go hit select we need to select the size this is white on white there is actually logo behind it and you can see here and the logo width i'm gonna go make it bigger and this looks really nice but when i hit publish you are actually going to be seeing something interesting. This button will disappear, but this logo will not. So let me show it to you. I'm gonna go exit this customization, and you can see when I reload, the button is gone, but the logo stays the same. Well, it's because this mistake. You actually don't wanna go and edit side title and logo, even it says so. You wanna go under transparent header because you can see that we are using transparent header and here you wanna go and change your logo. So if I change it right now, right here and adjust the size, you by the way wanna go and do the same thing with the size on tablet to make it a little bit bigger and also the size on phone and hit publish. And now you can see that our logo was successfully changed on transparent header which looks really nice, but let's also customize different stuff. Now you have probably seen that whenever we have our website, we have this WordPress logo, but other websites like Google Docs have this unique logo and SiteGround has this unique logo. Well, we can actually change ours as well. What we want to go and do is go under site identity and hit select site icon. Here we're going to go and upload our site icon, which should be really small. It's best to be 512 by 512 and I'm gonna hit select and you can see this preview in here okay I like the size I'm gonna go hit cropping and you can see that it's updated our site logo in here so whenever I'm gonna go hit publish 
you can see that it's using our logo which is super super cool. Now let's add some pages so that we can go and change those headings inside here. Adding pages in, adding pages in WordPress is really easy. Now you can think about pages like your site. You can see this is only your home page. This is your about page. So it's the separate section of your site. You can think about it like that. For example, let's create a new page. And let's call it recipes, just plain simple page. I'm gonna go and hit publish and view this page. Now you can see two main things. We have nothing in here, which is good because we haven't added anything, but we cannot edit it with Elementor and our logo is transparent, but it's white on white so we cannot see it. So let's fix those things. Firstly, logo. It's easy fix, we wanna go to header builder and under site title logo, we want to change this from white to different logo. So for this example, I'm going to go with this colorful one. I'm going to go hit select, manage this side to make it bigger and hit crop image. And you can see all of a sudden we have our good looking logo in here. I'm going to hit publish, but you don't need to worry because on our homepage, we are going to still have our transparent logo in here. But when we want to go and have it white on white, it will actually show colorful one, which is really good. We have already deal with one thing. Now let's deal with this no edit with Elementor button. It's really simple. You simply need to go to dashboard under pages and click on the page you want to go and edit. So for this is recipes. So I could go hit edit and here you can see this button edit with Elementor. You actually want to go and click it in here and it will take you to your already familiar Elementor editor where we can go and add sections. So for example, in here, I'm gonna go and add my blog post. There are two ways of doing it. I can simply go and recreate everything one by one or I can go onto my homepage where I've already created it. I'm gonna go, scroll down, find my healthy recipes, click on it, hit copy, and simply I'm gonna go delete this one and here, click paste and here we are our recipes now because this is wider we can actually go and put it on 100 1300 we can see that this is a little bit too wide so we can go and change this to from three to four and now this looks much much better but it doesn't show the last one why well because if you remember correctly under maximum amount of post we have set it only for free but now we can go and set it for, let's say 20, even though I have only eight posts in here. But if you have multiple posts, you are actually going to be able to see more of them. And when you have more posts, you wanna go and add this so people can actually go and navigate around it. But I don't need to deal with it because I have only one post. And once again, I can go and simply copy this inside here. Wait, I'm gonna bring this up. paste our recipes inside here and here we have our recipe block so you can go and preview it right here this looks really nice and if you have more recipes it will look even better but here is the problem we cannot actually access it from this website by any mean we don't see it in here and we haven't connected it to any specific button so we have to add it inside here well it's really easy to do it Let's go back to our dashboard. We actually want to go into WordPress and here under appearances, we want to go to menus. And here you can see your menu. But for the sake of it, I'm going to go and create a new menu. I'm going to go and hit create a new menu. And I'm going to call it our menu. And we can actually go and set it up in here. So we can go hit primary menu, which will change this menu for our menu. And we can also hit footer menu, which will also change this menu down here. So I want to change both of those. But if you want to have something different on your footer menu, you can create a specific menu for your footer side. But for this example, we're going to go for the same thing. So I'm going to go and hit create menu. And here I can start adding stuff. So let's just say I want everything besides services. So I want to go and add to menu and simply save menu. And as you can see, it will automatically apply it to here. Here's the cool trick. If you have multiple recipes and you will have 
too many stuff in here, you can actually go and move them slightly on the right side, which will create a sub item. Let me show it to you what it is. I'm gonna go save this menu, reload this website, and you can see the contact page will disappear. And because it's created as a sub menu, it will appear under recipes in here, which is really cool. And you can almost bring it back in here. Simply hit save changes and it will apply. So it will be in one line in here. And the same thing inside here, which is really, really cool. So you can start adding many things, creating pages, adding them in here, creating even subsections and simply saving menu. Now let's finally edit this bottom part. So I'm gonna go once again, go with customize and we wanna go for footer builder. Now let me change this copyright firstly. So we wanna go and add our own. So I'm gonna change it to something like this, copyright, the year and the name of the person owning this website. The cool thing is that you can also go and change this from line to let's say stack, if you wanna have it like this, but I'm gonna go keep it in line in here and you can do many stuff. Here we're gonna go and insert our logo. I'm gonna go for this one and I wanna go and delete this one. And you can make it a little bit bigger in here. And this looks nice. So this is our bottom part. You can also go and design it in here, however you like. You can also go to copyright. In design, I would like to change this to, let's say, black color. And the same thing with this. I don't like it to be green. It looks kind of weird. Let's put it on black and hit publish changes. Now, whenever we want to go to our website, we can see that everything works. Let me also add you this My Fitness Plan. I'm gonna go and redirect this button to our recipes. So it will actually take us to our plan. So now we wanna go delete this existing and simply put recipes. And you can see it on the right side that it's called page. So you're gonna go click on it. It will automatically insert the link. And I'm gonna go and hit update. Now, if I go and preview changes, someone come here, click this button. It will automatically redirect them in here. Now, if you have some workout plans, you can go and put it in here and redirect them to the workout plan page. Or even if you are selling something, you can redirect them to your store or many different stuff. So you can see that this looks awesome. Now, if you have successfully created this, you have no problem with creating website anymore. So you can simply go and change contact page. You can do this even by your own already. It's really not that hard. Here, you can see that our pre-installed plugin called WP Form Lines, where people can simply go and write your stuff. Many people don't actually use it, so you can, if you want, you can go and delete it. It already came with your email automatically installed in it, so people can already go, go and write you. You can go change it to your email, whatever you like. If you want to go and change color, it's pretty simple. Once again, go inside here, for example, change it to red color, so it will pop up. You can see email in here and you can also go and select this email as a different color. So put it on blue if you like. You can change color, adding social icons. I've already showed it to you and you can go and do many stuff. For example, you can go simply change this to something like this. You can go always adjust the size of it. And you can, for example, leave it like this. This looks really cool. And you can go and preview it right here or you can go and move it a little bit more so that if it's move, it doesn't move that much. This looks nice. So you can go keep it updated. And the same thing you can go and deal with about us page. You simply need to go and replace some images and paste some text in here. I will leave that up to you. So at this point, whenever visitors gonna come to your website, you have successfully created fully functional website. We have our logo, we have our navigation menu, we can see that we have video playing automatically. We have our buttons linked. Here we have automatically created posts. So whenever you add new posts, it will automatically come to right category. You can see that you have ability to ask questions. We have our logo, copyright, also our footer menu. We have some text in here. We have our social sharing buttons and some little about me page in here and also about me page in here and contact us page in here. And you can go and add multiple different pages and multiple different stuff. But for this video, this is everything. I hope you like this tutorial. Consider subscribing and goodbye.